Since step one went pass fail, some residencies are demanding almost twice as much research from applicants. I spent hours analyzing the data, comparing numbers before and after pass fail, and what I found will shock you. For the first time, we have exact numbers on what it took to match. In this video, we'll break down the top 15 most research intensive NRMP specialties, plus how to maximize your chances of matching in this new environment. Number 15 on our list is internal medicine. So the mean number of abstracts, presentations, and publications, which is their sort of catch-all for publications. So the thing to know about research for programs that participate in the MATCH or the NRMP, research output is actually measured by abstracts, presentations, and publications. For simplicity, I'm going to just refer to these as publications, but these numbers may seem extremely high in part because they're not all publications. It's actually a combination of abstracts and presentations and publications. So for internal medicine, this number was 8.7 in 2024, whereas it was 6.2 four years before for the matched applicants. For unmatched applicants, it was 6.2, um, which is up from 5.1 four years before. This represents research growth of more than 2.5. So I know that 2.5 more publications may not seem like a lot, but that's actually an increase of 40%. Internal medicine wasn't extremely competitive. For US seniors, the unmatched rate, meaning of all the US MD seniors that applied to the specialty, only 2.2% did not match if they put this as their first choice. I also calculated what the impact of having a PhD was by looking at the match rate for PhDs versus uh, people that don't have PhDs, and there was no difference in the case of internal medicine. For reference, I'll also include the hourly rate of earnings that each specialty makes. If you've watched our previous video on which specialties make the most money per hour, I'll also include that hourly rate. As we found, it explains a lot in terms of the competitiveness, and it also explains a lot in terms of why some specialties have more research requirements than others. Number 14 on our list is neurology. You'll note that there was an increase of 1.6 publications for people after step one when pass fail versus versus before, which is an increase of 22%. The unmatched rate was 6.2%, and with an hourly rate of $136.93, it also comes in number 17 for highest earning specialties. If we take a second to zoom out and look at all the specialties that we analyzed, 14 of the 15 specialties showed an increase in research demands. On average, successful applicants had 47% more publications than they needed in 2020. The highest was plastic surgery at an increase of 82% publications, with the one outlier being radiation oncology, which actually had 13% fewer publications for people that successfully matched. The median, shockingly, was anesthesiology, which had an increase of 73%. So getting back to our list, number 13 was OB-GYN, which had a mean number of publications of nine, which was an increase of 50% from 2020 before step one one pass fail. What's interesting about OB-GYN is, is that it had one of the starkest PhD disadvantages of any specialty. In the data that we analyzed, there were 18 people that had PhDs. They had a 20% less and they had a 67% chance of matching versus an 87% chance of matching for those who did not have a PhD. Anesthesiology comes in at number 12 with a mean number of abstracts, presentations, and publications of nine. This is an increase of 73% from 2020. The unmatched rate for US MD seniors was 14.8%, meaning that it was the number eight most competitive specialty on this list. Interestingly, the anesthesiology had the highest number of PhD applicants where there was a positive outcome, meaning that there, there was an apparent advantage to having a PhD and applying to anesthesiology. As someone who's trained in anesthesiology, I think this makes a lot of sense because I've spoken with a lot of people who have PhDs who preferred anesthesiology because of the nice controlled lifestyle that allowed people to sort of control how much they worked clinically and then spend more time in research as needed. Number 11 on our list was child neurology with average publications of 9.8, which is up 40% from 2020. Interestingly, it had a huge disparity between matched and unmatched applicants, where 2.9% of people that did not match had only one publication on average, whereas for the match, it was again 9.8. This was the most extreme research disparity between matched and unmatched applicants in the list that we looked at. There also was a slight PhD advantage, although the unmatched rate itself was only 2.9%. General surgery comes in at number 10 with a mean number of publications of 10.9, which is up 54% from 2020. With an unmatched rate of 18.2% for USMB seniors, this was the number six most competitive specialty on the list. Interestingly, there was a small PhD advantage 
for general surgery, meaning that there was the match rate for PhDs was 88% versus 83% for those that did not have PhDs. As we'll see, this is unusual among surgical specialties, which tended to have, on average, a disadvantage for having PhDs. Speaking of which, what if I told you that in some specialties, spending the three to five years extra getting a PhD could actually decrease your match rate by over 20%, or that in other cases, it could boost your chances by over 20%. Here's a list of the match rates for the top 15 research-heavy specialties ranked based on their impact of having a PhD. As you'll note, there are some specialties that have a huge advantage here. Dermatology, where the match rate for people with PhDs was 93%, which is 24% higher than those that did not have a PhD. You'll note that for some of these samples, interventional radiology appears to have a really strong advantage for having a PhD, but there were pretty small sample size. Anesthesiology had the most PhD applicants for the fields that had a positive impact for having a PhD. Internal medicine, as you might expect, had the most number of PhDs, probably since it has had the most number of applicants in general. The other thing to point out is, is that for surgical specialties, many of them had a disadvantage if you had a PhD. Ranging from neurosurgery, which had a 3% lower match rate for PhDs, all the way to orthopedic surgery, which had a 21% disadvantage for PhDs. Note that the calculated disadvantage for vascular surgery was 43%, but with only two PhD applicants, that's not a meaningful sample size. Returning to our list, we have number nine, diagnostic radiology, with a mean number of publications of 12. This is 79% higher than it was before step one went pass fail. In addition to this, radiology was one of the specialties where the, the number of publications that people that went unmatched was actually higher than the, the number of publications of people that match before step one one pass fail, right? So in 2020, the number of people that matched had 6.7 publications, whereas after step one one pass fail, the number of publications was eight. With an unmatched rate of 13.6%, it was the number 11 most competitive specialty on our list. Vascular surgery comes in at number eight with mean publications of 12.8, 22% higher than it was in 2020. As we mentioned before, on the surface, there appears to be a strong disadvantage to having a PhD if, if you want to match into vascular surgery, although because there were only two people that applied, that's probably more noise than actual signal. Number seven on our list is interventional radiology with a mean number of publications of 15.8. This is up 53% from 2020 when it was only 10.3. Interventional radiology had the strongest positive PhD advantage where 100% of the people with PhD is that you're matched versus only 83% that didn't have a PhD match. Note that this is probably skewed by the fact there were only three PhD applicants that year among USMD seniors. Number six on our list is radiation oncology with a mean number of abstracts, presentations, and publications among the matched applicants of 15.9, which is actually down 13% from what it was in 2020 when it was 18.3. This dropped its ranking from number two in 2020 to number six. Perhaps unsurprisingly, the unmatched rate among USMD and be senior was 2.5%. Also of note for PhDs, there was actually a 12% lower match rate for if you had a PhD versus if you did not have a PhD, where 100% of the people that year without a PhD matched. Also interestingly, radiation oncology still has a very, very high hourly rate of $250. Number five on our list is otolaryngology with mean matched publications of 20, which is up 46% from 2020. It's another one of those specialties where the number of abstracts, publications, and presentations among the unmatched population after step one went pass fail is actually higher than what it took to match in 2020. Like many other surgical subspecialties, there did appear to be a disadvantage to having a PhD, where among the nine USMD senior PhD applicants, they had a 78% chance of matching versus 84% if you didn't have a PhD. The calculated hourly earnings for otolaryngology is about $207, and so unsurprisingly, the unmatched rate is quite high, 18.1%, which would make it the number five most competitive specialty on this list. Number four on our list is orthopedic surgery. The mean number of abstracts, presentations, and publications for matched applicants was 23.8, which is 66% higher than it was in 2020. Continuing the trend among the, the most competitive specialties, the number of publications among unmatched applicants also was higher than it was for matched applicants in 2020. Also continuing the trend among surgical subspecialties, the 13 applicants that had PhDs had a match rate of 54%, which was 21% lower than the 75% match rate for people that didn't have PhDs. Number three on our list was dermatology with mean publications of 27.7, which is up 46% from 2020. Perhaps unsurprisingly, the mean number of publications for people that didn't match equaled the number of publications for people that did match 
four years prior. With an unmatched rate of 29.5%, this is the, the second most competitive specialty on this list. Dermatology had one of the biggest PhD advantages and the largest PhD advantage where there was a meaningful sample size, given that there were 30 PhDs that applied, suggesting that research intensive backgrounds particularly are valued here, despite being non-surgical. Plastic surgery comes in at number two with mean number of abstracts, presentations, and publications of 34.7. This is 82% higher than it was four years ago. The average number of publications in the unmatched group was 26.3, which blew away the, the average number of publications in 2020 for the matched applicants of 19.1. This was the highest increase in research growth across all specialties, which is crazy given that it already started at three ranking in 2020 previously. Plastic surgery was one of the few surgical subspecialties where having a PhD seemed to benefit, although there were only six PhD applicants among USMD seniors. And the number one specialty for research in the post step one pass fail era was neurosurgery. The mean number of abstracts, presentations, and publications was 37.4, which is 60% higher than it was in 2020. Also of note, the mean publications for unmatched applicants was almost 50% higher than it was for MASH applicants in 2020 when it was 23.4. That is insane. For USMD seniors that rank this as their top choice of 31.3%, there seemed to be a minor disadvantage for having a PhD. Neurosurgery is the true triple threat. It was the number one in research, in pay, and selectivity. Even unmatched applicants in neurosurgery have more research than most of the MASH applicants in most other specialties, showing how the field's research standards have redefined what it means to be competitive. So based on all these data, what can you do to maximize your chances of matching? I know it's ironic, but step one going pass fail seems to have given some practical advantages to trying to figure out what specialty you want to go into earlier rather than later, given how much more research people who successfully match need. What this also means is that if you're in your clinical years or approaching your clinical years, you might consider taking an extra research year if you're targeting one of these top specialties. Another thing to reiterate is, is that these numbers aren't just about original research publications. They also include things like abstracts, presentations, review articles, or sometimes even book chapters. The other thing to remember is that learning how to study efficiently becomes critical, since not only is there like substantially more research necessary, you also don't want to tank your chances by having a low or especially a failing score on step one or step two. Because while research publications are more important than ever, your step two score remains crucial for matching into competitive specialties. In our next video, we'll break down the key differences between step one and step two and show you proven strategies to excel on both exams while studying efficiently so you can maximize your research output.